the last thing that you're gonna do on site description is tell me how much biomass is out here. The amount of biomass on a site is gonna tell you whether it's good for livestock or wildlife. So it's understanding how much biomass there is, is really important. When you come to this site, you'll have three frames, one, two, three in this case. They're round frames, big round frames, and the flag on each of them will be numbered one, two, three. Your job is to look at those three frames, click carefully, and then you're gonna take kind of in your head, take a mental average of those three frames, and then you're gonna put it in one of the categories that's on the score sheet. So again, you're gonna try to look at those three frames, in your head, average them. If you wanna make some notes on and try to average them that way, you're welcome to do that. And then just click one for the average of those three, because as you can see on any range site, it's not very uniform. There are places there will have a lot of biomass and some won't have very much. So we're gonna um, take an average of those. You are also gonna take and see how much biomass of shrubs there are. So first we're just gonna take uh, our, our other camera and we're gonna give you a close up look of plot one, plot two, plot three. Then I'm gonna clip them and we're gonna find out how much biomass they actually have. And then you'll know how much you should put on this sheet. Okay, now you had a good look on at plot one, plot two, and plot three. So I'm gonna show you how to clip grass, and I'm gonna show you uh, how much biomass is in here. I'm gonna do all the clipping and weighing, and we'll do the calculations uh, back in the lab. Uh, so first of all, there's two kinds of biomass out here. There's the herbaceous biomass. That's the stuff that is not woody. It's the stuff that will die back to the ground. So all forbs and grasses are herbaceous. Then there's the woody biomass, and in this case we have some nice antelope bitter brush here, and that's the woody plant. We only clip this season's growth, and the reason for that is we're not going to clip the stuff that was like 10 years old, because if you're a self-respecting deer or elk and you come along here, you're not going to want that old stuff. You want to eat the new nutritious stuff, so I'm going to show you how to see the difference between that old growth and the new growth. And the reason that we're um, separating those two is because we're really thinking about wildlife in this case. This is good wildlife habitat. We want to know what they would find this and how it would find it useful. First thing to do when you're clipping a plot, go around the plot, make sure it's laying down really well. And I usually do that with my clippers. And this one is pretty good. Got it pretty much laying down all the way around. There's a couple kinds of clippers. I use these big ones in most uh, um, hardware stores. You can get these smaller ones. You can even use sheep shears. I've seen people use sheep shears, but these are the kind I use. And if you do a lot of this, you're gonna to wanna to get some nice clippers. So let's start with herbaceous. I just kneel down on the ground and I just start clipping. And I'm just gonna clip everything that is herbaceous. I'm gonna take out last year's growth because that's also not nutritious or delicious. There we go, we got that little buckwheat gone. so I don't lose track of it when I weigh it. But I need to get the shrubs out of here, and here's shrub one. I just still have a little bit of grass here that when I get the shrubs out of the way, I'll be able to see it a little bit better. Um, you can use the shrub clippers, but my clippers are pretty t uh, sharp, so I'm just gonna go ahead and clip the shrubs out of here so I can see what's going on. See, some of that's really woody, and some of it's not. Here's some grass that got stuck in there, so I'm gonna throw that in my grass bag. Just trying to separate out what is uh, grass or not. Let me show you what is this year's growth and last year's growth. So here is some woody stuff. That's definitely several years ago. And then as you go up the, the stem, it'll start to look a little younger, like here. This is real light, it's real flexible, and so that is part of the new growth. Here's another stem, that's this year's stem. This is woody down here, that's a, a new stem there, real shiny, not woody, real flexible. When you're clipping, you're gonna wanna take all of the, the uh, 
the leaves off because those were all this year and you're going to want to clip off that new those new year stems so that's what we're looking for right now is the old growth leave it behind take all the leaves off and take those new stems and there's some good examples of new stems Okay, we did a great job in the field clipping biomass and putting it in bags and weighing it so we have weight in grams per plot. Now we need to convert that to something more useful and that would be um, biomass in pounds per acre. So let's do the calculations. Okay, now when we take a look at those bags, on plot one we had 82 grams of weight clipped of herbaceous weight on, in plot one. Okay, that's the number of grams per frame, but that grams, some of that material was green so it had some moisture in it. And if you went back and when it was really dry, the numbers would change just because the amount of moisture changes. So when we are comparing across seasons or across places, we want to compare on a dry matter basis, not on a field weight basis. So how do we get dry matter? We could take that bag, take those 82 grams, we could throw them in the oven, and we just put them at kind of a low temperature for a couple days and figure out how much dry matter was in there, get rid of all the moisture. But what we tend to do is use what we call book values. So organizations like the Natural Resources Conservation Service realized that the, as a plant matures, depending on what stage of growth it's in, that will give you a pretty good estimate of what percent dry matter it is. So for grasses that are about mature and seeded, which is what ours were, it'd be 55 to 60% dry matter. Uh, Forbes, also the Forbes we had were seed ripe, their leaves were starting to dry, so they would be about 60% dry matter. Shrubs were mature, full size. So we're gonna use these book values in that row percent estimated dry matter and we're going to say that herbaceous biomass in our plots was 60 percent dry matter and the woody plants were 50. so let's go and look at the other estimates then for plot one so if we had 82 grams in the field times 60 percent dry matter that's 49 grams of dry weight material in that frame now we don't usually talk about grams per plot because you'd have to know what plot what size was before it would be very useful so we convert grams per plot to pounds per acre because that's the term that we use when we're down at the coffee shop talking about range we're talking about pounds per acre so uh, grams per plot in our case times 20 gives us pounds per acre so these plots are kind of a weird size they're 4.8 feet round um, but when you take that size plot that kind of weird size plot and you take the grams in that size plot times 20 you'll get pounds per acre so the, the plot is a weird size because it makes the conversion easy uh, and then if you multiply your grams times that conversion factor we have 980 pounds per acre the woody biomass in that plot one was 36 grams it's 50 percent dry matter that's 18 uh, grams of dry matter use that same conversion of 20 and we get 360 pounds per acre plot two started with 52 do our conversions and we get 620 pounds per acre plot three started with 46 grams in the field account for dry matter and do the conversion to to uh, convert grams per plot to pounds per acre and we get 560 pounds per acre so when we add it all up we can see that we have on average 720 pounds per acre of herbaceous biomass we got that by adding the 980 pounds per acre in plot 1, 620 in plot 2, and 560 in plot 3. That equals 2,160 pounds per acre for three plots. Divide by three would give us uh, 720 pounds per acre on average. Total woody matter, we only had woody material in one plot. That was 360 um, pounds per acre. Divide by three because there was zero in uh, the other two zero pounds per acre in the other two so that'd be 120 pounds per acre of woody material on average now where does that go on the scorecard uh, well the 720 pounds is what we had in herbaceous biomass and if you look over on the scorecard for herbaceous biomass you can see that is in this category of 400 to 800 so that's what we'd mark on the scorecard the shrubs were 120 pounds, which means we marked this lowest level, 0 to 400. So that's what it looks like on the scorecard. Now, we don't do clipping in the field when we're in the contest. We do clip the plots at the end of the contest to make sure we've uh, got a good estimate as a key. Um, but this is just how you learn how to see how much biomass is in a plot. When, when, this, when the teams are out there, they're just looking at three plots and we're trying to give a rough estimate. 
of how much herbaceous or current season shrubs are in those plots. But to get your eye trained to see how much a biomass is in a plot is the only way you can do that is by clipping. So you look at a plot and you clip it and you use these calculations we just did here to see how much biomass there really is in that plot. So that's why we clip today is just to get your eye trained to figuring out what does 720 pounds per acre look like.